Hi, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, uh, so bear with me, but this is John Darkarps here. I'm going to show you um, a little something with Ableton that I have really been struggling with, and I've just found a, uh, a useful solution. And the, the problem is um, when moving from a production into a live performance uh, environment, um, I like to, as you should all do, bounce stems and then chop those stems up into um, a project in Ableton. Um, or in my case, my kind of uh, live setup project in Ableton. Now, the problem that I've been encountering is that even if I make a series of um, stems, which we see here, which are all exactly the same length, uh, you know, 128.1 megabytes, this track here is, uh, let's see, uh, this is at 135, this tune. So if I go into this uh, template that I just loaded up, I'm already set to 135 BPM. And, you know, it should be a real piece of piss just to drag your audio in and, um, you know, uh, get it to all warp up nicely in convenient eight bar chunks. So I've made a hash of that. Let's try that again. Um, but as you'll see, it really um, isn't, especially if I keep screwing up. One more time. There we go. I make sure they actually land on audio channels, which these are. Anyway, um, as you'll see here, we've got five lovely stems, which are all exactly the same length, precisely the same length. Now, basically, what I've been struggling with is that when you throw long samples into Ableton, it tries to warp them for you. Uh, and unfortunately, it never, ever seems to get it right, especially considering that you know you have produced these stems and they are precisely uh, an exact uh, length, they are precisely a multiple of eight bars at a certain tempo. So you think it should be very straightforward for it just to go chop, 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 set warp points for every um, beginning point of each slice. Um, and you can get very lost and confused when it doesn't appear to do that for you. So here is the solution. The solution is, first of all, in your preferences to make sure that, uh, if I can remember where this is, under Record Warp Launch, um, this Auto Warp Long Samples turn off. Make sure that's off. So that when you bring these long samples in, none of them are warped. Um, as you can see here, the warp button is grayed out. So none of these are actually warped. But um, they are precisely the correct length. Um, I just have to get in here. So they're precisely the same length, um, and everything will sync up absolutely perfectly. <laughs> Theoretically, right? Basically, the balance is wrong here. This is just for demonstration purposes. However, um, what I've discovered is that when you try and turn warp on, uh, and then you have to kind of go into each, you know, go into each cell and, oh, uh, you know, I've started to get drifting and stuff like that. Like, it, it, it just doesn't really seem to work very well. So the solution is, um, before you actually hit the warp button, is slice up your clips into eight bar chunks, if that's how you want to work. That's how I like to work, um, so in, in sort of eight bar loops. Um, because eventually I'm going to move this arrangement into the session view and perform it that way. This is obviously a very quick demonstration. Um, I'm making highlights and I'm using Command E, by the way, to uh, chop those up into nice even chunks like that. Uh, and now, at this point, what you can do is you can select these objects and click Warp. And now what this does is it actually creates a warp marker at the end point, the beginning point of each of these slices, which it wouldn't do before. So now that it's done that, it, it, it's actually created um, a very reliable um, beat one marker point uh, or warp point for each of these slices because when you slice them up in the first place, they weren't in warp mode, but they were true. That you know, Ableton wasn't trying to time stretch them at all. They were absolutely true. So each slice that you made was exactly sample accurate, in pre precisely the right point. So now that you've done that, you make a selection, you click warp. Each one of these bad boys is precisely, you know, 
like, well, this is a kind of a wishy thing, so it's not going to be a good example, but under, let's say, kick drum here, if I just select all of these kicks, um, and I'm going to turn warp on, and we're just going to double click on one of these, and we're going to zoom right in to that warp marker, and as you can see, it's bang on. I mean, it's close enough. It's close. So, um, basically, having done that, uh, I can now go ahead and turn warp on for all of these. In fact, I can make a multiple two-row selection like that, and it'll have done the same thing for every one of these. Unfortunately, there is one giant headache that you still have to go through, and that is you have to click on each one of these loops, uh, or these clips, and control click somewhere around in this uh, zoom bar area, and choose loop current region. If you want these regions to loop in playback when you um, you know put them into session view like this, right? Um, so now this is how I perform my my stuff live. I have all the different um, clips lined up in scenes um, as they were in the arrangement. Very simple to do that. Just um, click on one, hold shift, um, click on the diagonally opposite one to select everything and then command C to copy and then click on the first cell that you'd like to paste it in command V which I just did previously and there it just goes bang 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 and loads them all there um, the, the balance isn't right for any of this right now, it's really just for demonstration purposes um, but the problem you'll have now is that um, when the uh, eight bars are up um, it's going to, what is it going to do, it's probably just going to stop playing all of these clips, which is not what you want because you might want to loop that scene, you might want to have that scene continue playing. So this kick should now stop. Yeah, see everything stops, so not ideal. Unfortunately, as I said, you have to go through each one of them individually. It's a real ball ache, loop current region. Pain in the ass. Um, it would be great if Ableton did something about this because this is clearly the most efficient way for anyone who produces their own tracks uh, and wants to play them live, separate out the independent elements uh, and perform them live. This is clearly the quickest, uh, most efficient, most professional way of doing it. Anyway, for anyone who did want to work that way and was having difficulty figuring out how the hell to get Ableton to warp your samples in a clean, precise, eight bar chunk manner, that is how I have discovered you can do it. Uh, have fun.